three locations with one goal. Experience, understand, appreciate. I'm WEIU's Lacey Spence. Today we'll share why you should take a hike to Douglas Hart Nature Center. Take a hike on WEIU is supported by Roll King, America's farm and home store, camping supplies, kayaks, fishing and pet supplies, and more. Find your store and more information regarding Roll King at RollKing.com. Hi, I'm WEIU's Lacey Spence. I've lived in central Illinois my whole life, and if there's one thing I've learned, you don't have to go far to find the beauty of the great outdoors. Come along with me as I visit a variety of parks and natural areas in central Illinois, and share why you should take a hike to each episode's location. Adventure and fun await in Take a Hike, the mini-series. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Take a Hike. I'm your host, Lacey Spence, and today we are joined by Abby DeBurr, and we are here at the Douglas Hart Nature Center. Can you please share what your title is here? Yes, I'm the Education Director here at the Douglas Hart Nature Center. Fabulous. Well, welcome to the show. We are super excited to be here. There's a lot that Douglas Hart has to offer the Coles County and beyond community if you feel like taking a hike to the area. So uh, first, how did the Douglas Hart Foundation kind of come to be? Yeah, so Helen Douglas Hart is our founder. Um, we always say she's a woman before her time. Um, so back in the 1960s, um, she decided, she always knew she um, wanted to have a nature preserve. Um, she loved to travel. And so um, part of this all started from her travels and she was really big in agriculture, arts, history, um, really big in the community. Um, she actually was Coles County's first female pilot. So wow. she was definitely just an amazing woman. A Jill of all trades. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so 1963, the foundation was started um, and their first project was Friendship Garden located in Mattoon at 17th and Lafayette. Um, and that was based off her um, adventures over in Europe, the English tea gardens. Um, so it's just a quaint urban garden um, that is, we welcome everybody to go visit. Um, and then in the 70s, 60s, 70s, they began at uh, the property here, the Douglas Hart Nature Center. We kind of call this like the mama uh -huh. um, because it has our visitor center, our classrooms, everything's here. Um, and then this is where we're gonna do the bulk of our programming and our events. So um, with that, they started here. If, as you look around, um, you wouldn't know it, this used to be farm ground. Wow. Um, and so that was kind of why we say she's a woman before her time is like, what, a woman in the, you know, 60s, 70s buying farmland and then she's going to till it all up. And they started by planting 10,000 trees, um, which is really just a, it's just a cool story. Um, yeah. I wish I could have met Helen. Um, and we love meeting people out in the community that actually have met Helen. And so if anybody has any stories, we always encourage them to come up front with those. Um, and so then with that, um, slowly but surely came the actual visitor center. So, and that was in the 80s and 90s. They kind of done some additions since then, um, but it's fantastic. And then in December 2018, um, we acquired, acquired the Whiteside Garden uh, in Charleston, which is definitely a new thing for us as it's a botanical garden, um, but we are definitely excited for this adventure with it. Yes, and we're excited to show our viewers uh, the Whiteside Garden in just a little bit, but to pivot back to the Nature Center, um, from what I understand, there is just so much for families to do. Um, can you talk a little bit about some of the opportunities of Douglas Hart? Yeah, so um, I always say, you name it, we do it. Um, <laughs> we do a lot of bigger events um, coming up, uh, well, in this season is our haunted hike. Um, but then we do um, Earth Day Festival. Um, we also offer summer camps, um, which is definitely our big programming, um, probably highlight of the year. Um, we do a fall fest in the past we've done. We do a winter wonderland walk. So we have some bigger festivals yeah. um, that we encourage people to attend. Um, but we also just do public programming. Um, we like to capitalize on those days that the kids are out of school. We mm -hmm. want them to get outside, get in nature, um, and just have a fun day. Um, and then along the way, they're going to learn, which is great. We also offer uh, scouting programs. Um, we just kind of do it all. Um, yeah. We have some homeschool programs that we offer. Um, we do some adult programming, um, as well as we are do some monthly programs. And that's kind of our big thing here. We have a bird club, a Nature Nuts Kids Club, Care Club. We just 
We do it all. <laughs> you name it, we do it. That's yep. fair. So um, it, folks who are wanting to see these kind of activities, um, I would say pointing them towards a website, a Facebook, that's a, probably the best place to keep up with all things Douglas Hart. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, so our website is www.dhnature.org, and then you can find us on Facebook, um, the Douglas Hart Nature Center, Friendship Garden, and the Whiteside Garden. Perfect. So folks who have never been out here before, is it just those trees that our, our good founder had planted. What uh, are their trails? What does this place have to offer? Yeah, absolutely. So we're about 70 acres here. Okay. Um, and our trails are all flat, easy trails. They're all limestone. Um, we do have a couple mulch trails, so they're really easy to get a, around. Um, and they go through our prairie, our woodlands, and we have a wetland and pond as well. Wow. Um, so that's probably the pond and feeding the fish in the spring and summer um, is probably definitely a highlight. Mm -hmm. um, but our kids really love our nature play area, which is kind of our take on a playground. Um, and we have a zip line. And so now anytime I go somewhere, like if I'm doing outreach and I say, oh, I'm from Douglas Hart Nature Center mm -hmm. and they go, oh, the place with the zip line. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that is definitely a fan favorite here. Um, but yeah, you can come in. Our uh, trails are open dawn to dusk um, every day of the year. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, of course, we have our visitor center, which has our animal exhibits. Um, we have a little library in there, you know, restrooms, of course, if you need them. We have a discovery den that's kind of like a playroom. Um, so we have lots to offer families and it's all free to come out here. That's honestly a, a big sell for a lot of people because sometimes mm -hmm. um, it's just not quite in the budget to maybe, you know, drive somewhere and then tickets or whatever. So it's nice that there's this free resource in Coles County. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry if I missed it. How many trails do you have here? Ish. Um, so our trails kind of loop in together. Okay. Um, so we kind of have one big main trail that goes, uh, wraps around the property and then a couple crossover trails. So as I was perusing your website, I came across something that said it was the fairy trail. Yeah. Can you talk about that? So that's in our nature play area. Um, and it's just one of our little side trails there. Um, and we've actually had community members that have contributed to that. Um, and we just have little, I think a lot of them were little old bird houses that they've decorated like fairy houses uh -huh. um, and then other little fairy trinkets that you find throughout there. So we actually encourage the public to make things and then they can add them to the fairy trails. It's really Very cute. Cool. <laughs> and we were actually talking, um, our production crew was talking with some other folks who said that geocaching is kind of big out here. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we have um, a couple geocaches that we manage here, um, mm -hmm. but we actually have people that um, manage their own geocaches here. Um, which is really great. And so if you have a cell phone, you can do it. You can download the geocaching app. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's just like a GPS based treasure hunt. So uh, it's definitely a highlight out here. And um, I won't say it because I don't oversee Douglas Hart, but I'm sure it's important that if people are out looking for ones to um, not get too invasive, to, to make sure you respect the property. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so we always encourage leave no trace behind as you're here. Um, if you're having a picnic lunch or whatever your adventures entail is that, you know, um, we always say encourage people to leave the space uh, looking better than the way you found it. Um, so as I'm walking the trails, I, if I see a little piece of trash, I'm always picking them up. Um, so we definitely want people to stay on the trails as much as possible. Um, but we understand that there's sometimes that maybe there's a bird that you really want to get closer to to see what it is, um, or our geocaches might be a little off trail. Um, so just be mindful of the property, absolutely. And you uh, mentioned earlier, I think, um, birding. Is there any sort of birding out here or? Yeah, so in the fall and spring, we do Thursday morning bird walks. Um, and that's led by a volunteer here. I've uh, been here a long time. And so the group just goes out and they go and ID birds. Um, it's a really great group. They're all super kind and welcoming. Um, but we also offer a monthly bird club, which is the last Tuesday of the month. And we have guest speakers. Sometimes they go on walks. Um, it's just a big variety of what they do. Um, but that is definitely a, one of our popular adult clubs. And as we're camped out underneath the trees earlier, you had mentioned the prairie land. Um, part of the property. Can you mm -hmm. kind of talk about what that difference is between where people are kind of on the trails proper? <laughs> yeah, so um, our prairie is a grassland. Um, we have three different prairies. Um, we have our south prairie, our north prairie, and our edge prairie. Um, and those are really interesting because we are actually Illinois is the prairie state. Right. And if I ask people, hey, how many of you guys have been in the woods? I'll get almost a whole room full of people raising their hands. And if I said, hey, who's been in a prairie? I get like a couple people. They don't. They don't know what a prairie is. Yeah. Um. So it's a great habitat that we have to offer here. We are a restored site. Um. So, used to way back in the 1800s, we used to be, um, have lots of prairies. But then as settlers moved in, 
Um, we have, I believe they say it's like less than one one hundredth of a percent of natural prairie left. Wow. Um, so, which is a horrifying statistic, yeah. but sites like Douglas Heart Nature Center, um, we have a restored prairie and it's great for all sorts of wildlife um, and for people to experience it. Um, and then, in, of course, in the summer, the spring, summer, and even the fall, we have some really beautiful blooms through there. And then to kind of, I don't know, uh, mirror that, the wetlands? Mm -hmm. Is that just where they, the folks feed the fish or is that somewhere different? So um, primarily you're going to see our fish in our pond. Okay. Um, but our wetlands, um, we do see a lot of uh, different wildlife there. I Lots of frogs. Um, okay. <laughs> um, and then lots of waterfowl as well. Interesting. And where is that located as far so, as <laughs> when yeah. you're in the park? So that'll be on the more on the north side of the property before you guys get to um, the North Prairie. Um, our pond and our wetlands going to be um, on the west side, and then our pond's kind of central up there as you get north or to the property. Gotcha. And White Side Garden that we're going to check out in a little bit, um, there are tours available there. Are there tours available of this site as well? Yeah, so any of our sites, if you're interested in having a tour and learning more about them, you can just schedule through me, um, or you can just call us at 217-235-4644. Um, you can email us. Our program's email is programs at dhnature.org. Um, we're happy to help anybody. We definitely want to share our love of nature with people. So we love to schedule tours. Um, we offer field trips for school groups. That's one of the big things we also mm -hmm. offer, as well as outreach. So we know sometimes it's hard for people to travel here, um, and we love to spread the love. So we're go we are more than willing to go off into schools or other organizations um, and talk about Douglas Hart or maybe it's just a specific topic. Um, we love to educate people. And so how long have you been with Douglas Hart? Yeah, so I um, got my start here as a summer camp counselor in the summer of 2015. And when I graduated um, SIUE in May of 2016, I was really fortunate that I was, I was a position available as an environmental educator and I got the job and then they couldn't get rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> you love it so much you didn't leave. Yep. Um, so in that time, have you noticed a lot of uh, changes between how things were when you started to what they've developed to now? Yeah, I always like to say that we are always striving to go bigger and we keep growing and growing and growing. Mm -hmm. um, our staff has grown, our property has changed. Um, just over here um, at our outdoor classroom. Um, it was used to be overgrown and they have completely rehabilitated it and planted new things. Um, our properties are always changing um, mm -hmm. and we're always <laughs> offering new things to the public and we really want to make sure that we're serving the community as best we can so we're always willing to grow and change with the community and serve the community how they need it. And so for community members who want to give back to this site specifically, mm -hmm. um, is there a way that they can do that? I know you mentioned Earth yeah. Day. I always kind of think, yeah. you know, kind of tie those two things together. Yeah, so um, I think a big thing um, that we offer as a site is we are free for people to come and walk our trails and come into our visitor center. The Friendship Garden's free, White Side Garden, it's free when you guys just are going and taking a hike. Um, and so a big part of that is the way we're doing that is through donations um, or through our memberships. So we offer a different uh, levels of memberships that we always encourage people to be part of as part of that there's different incentives based on what level you are um, but you always get usually priority registration for any programs we do discounts on programs mm -hmm. um, so that's always a great way to support um, but if you want to be more involved um, our volunteer coordinator Melina um, you can contact her at volunteer at dhnature.org or you can give her a call um, but she's happy to set you up we always say we can find something for everybody because um, you know, not everybody maybe wants to do our conservation work and be out in the heat and, you know, working outside with all the insects or so we love to work with people and find a job for them. We have um, an awesome conservation crew that comes um, weekly to help out our land steward director. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want to get involved, we will find something for you. <laughs> Well, I have to ask, when we pulled up, we happened to notice there were some solar panels on the property. What does that have to do with anything? Yeah, so um, those are actually pretty new. We just got those installed last year. Um, and we want to lead by example. Um, and so, you know, as we kind of practice what we preach, and we were really fortunate that TikTok Energy, um, we worked with them to get them installed here um, to help kind of offset um, our emissions. And we are really excited to kind of dive into this. We are, they really are pretty brand new to us. So we're excited to learn more and then educate the public on them. 
And I know that you said you've been here for a while. What's it like for you to maybe see some of these people who have never really experienced nature in this way per se, um, kind of develop a love for it? Yeah, it's um, very fascinating to see as I was always one of those kids um, outside and playing and probably doing things I shouldn't have been doing, <laughs> um, you know, and then I just had to come back inside when I heard my parents whistle for me. Um, and so when you finally get kids out here um, and they start really diving into your program um, and then parents, you know, we get lots of compliments, um, not to toot our horn or anything, yeah. um, but they reach out and they say, oh my gosh, my son, my daughter, they said they've never had so much fun learning before um, because we're really big on our hands-on approach um, and our motto here is experience, understand, appreciate. Mm -hmm. um, and so we want kids to get out in nature and adults too. Um, will you be surprised about how many adults um, lack that nature experience as well to get out and experience it and be hands-on to kind of understand it you know as you're observing things you're touching things you start to understand it better um, and then we hope that that understanding leads to a lifelong appreciation and as we're wrapping up do you have a favorite memory that maybe you've had out at Douglas Hart or any of the oh. properties I guess oh that's a tough one I don't know if I have a favorite memory I just um, I'm very fortunate that I look forward to coming to work every day. Mm -hmm. um, I would say probably um, summer camps or haunted hike are my favorite events or programs that we do here. Mm -hmm. um, those are just always my highlights. Um, but I'm very, very blessed to be here in a place where there's always something new going on. It's very exciting. I'm learning new things every day um, and it's a great place to be. That's always great to hear. So before we wrap up, is there anything that we might have missed about um, any of the three properties or anything you'd like to share that I didn't quite ask about? Hmm. Um, I will say a lot of people um, are asking about our carvings on our trails. So <laughs> if you're walking our trails here at the Nature Center, you're going to see we have four different carvings on our trails. Um, and those are because, unfortunately, the emerald ash borer is an invasive species that um, has affected our ash trees. Um, mm -hmm. So we've been busy cutting those down. Our conservation uh, team has been doing a fantastic job of that. It has been very labor intensive over the past couple years, but we want to kind of put a positive spin on that. And so we actually um, hired someone to do these carvings for us. Um, so you can see those on the trail. Um, that's kind of a new highlight that a lot of people are enjoying. You know, we are going to be replanting, and this area is a great example of it. Um, and we're going to continue replanting and replenishing um, and rehabilitating our site. And it's just so cool to think that this all started with one very special lady. Yep. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's just, it's a great thing that you all are doing to keep things going around here, especially for the community, especially offering some free programming. Yeah. Just fabulous. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so Glad to be we here. are going to take a quick break and then we are going to transition to uh, one of the other Douglas Hart properties, the Whiteside Garden. So don't go anywhere. Take a hike. We'll be right back. Are you ready to set out on a hike but can't figure out what to wear? Here are some tips to get you started. A good pair of hiking boots or trail shoes is crucial. You're going to need something sturdy and supportive while giving you traction on any surface you may encounter. In warmer weather, try wearing shirts, socks, and undergarments made of polyester or nylon. Those materials will help move sweat off your skin. When it's cold outside, layering is key. You'll want an insulating base layer, whether that's wool or a high quality synthetic material. It'll work to keep your body heat where it belongs in your body. Next, you'll need a removable middle layer and an outer layer that's wind and waterproof. Warm socks, gloves, and hats are equally as important to make sure you stay protected during those cold winter hikes. Wearing a sturdy pair of pants is always a good choice on a hike, whether it's to keep warm or to protect your legs from branches, rocks, or critters. And speaking of protection, a brimmed hat for sun protection will help top off your hiking ensemble. The most important thing to remember when getting dressed for a hike is to be prepared for any conditions you may face and always dress for function over fashion. You can't look good if you don't feel good. A short drive away from Douglas Hart, we are now at the Whiteside Garden and we've uh, got Abby still here with us and you're going to give us the walkthrough of the Whiteside Garden. So first off, um, who is this park named after? Uh, so the garden is named after Wesley Whiteside. He was actually a professor at EIU, um, which is super great to 
be able to keep on his legacy that he left for us. So this used to be his residence um, and it's beautiful, not like yes. any home I've ever seen before. Um, and so being a botany professor, he was very creative in what he did here. So to my knowledge, when he bought the land, it was pretty much just a field and pasture. So what we're seeing here um, is definitely a lot of his work alongside with interns and volunteers that he brought here to help him. Um, on the property, there's probably hundreds and hundreds of different species of plants here. Some of them you're gonna see are rare, possibly endangered. Um, he was very unique in his process as he buried bathtubs in the ground to create microclimates to help um, specific plants get the soil that they needed to thrive. So in a little bit, we're gonna go check those out because you have to come to Whiteside and you have to see the bathtubs. <laughs> Definitely, so for people who are wanting to check this area out, is there a certain season that's best to come, um, time of day, that kind of thing? Yeah, so um, this is our first year that we have opened up to the public. Uh, and you can come here on Fridays and Saturdays, typically spring through fall. Um, and you can check out the property, walk the trails. There's a lot to see here. Um, it really, I've always been told that you have to come once every couple weeks to truly see everything in bloom. So that's quite the commitment. So from spring through fall, you would have to come that often to actually see everything in bloom. But every time you're here, you are gonna see something fantastic and probably new to you. And if I'm not super familiar with plant life, but I want to learn more, um, I believe you guys offer tours of this place, correct? Yeah, absolutely. So that's something you can schedule through me. Um, on my home base is Douglas Hart. Um, so you can always contact me through email, through phone, or at our website. Um, you contact me, we'll schedule a tour. Um, and yes, so that's a great way to learn. Also, if you are here on your own and you didn't schedule a tour, um, your phone is really handy for identifying our plant life here. Um, you can use the Google Lens app or iNaturalist or Seek. Those are fantastic resources. Fabulous. And if I'd like to give back to uh, the Whiteside Garden, whether it's um, through cleanup days or something like that, what kind of opportunities are there for me to get back? Yeah, so we do something called Whiteside Wednesdays. That's just a volunteer day. I um, mean, you can coordinate that through our volunteer coordinator. Um, she'll get you all set up there. Um, something that we also do at the Nature Center and here is something that we call front desk hosting. Um, and that's something that's pretty unique to our site to allow us to stay open and keep our visitor center and welcome centers open. Um, we rely on volunteers to do that for us. So it's a, uh, we put a lot of trust in our volunteers yeah. to open up the buildings and greet our guests. Um, but that's something I always recommend if you're not one to want to be out in the heat and working in the garden, that's a fantastic way to do so. Also here at the Whiteside Garden, we have an adopt a bed program, which is really great. So we have a handful of volunteers that have uh, selected a portion of the garden to kind of call their own and they are in charge of weeding, uh, maintaining, watering. Um, but the great thing about that is our um, staff here will teach our volunteers how to do that. So you don't have to be an expert to get your hands in the dirt here. Uh -huh. um, we are here to help. That is great to hear because I know uh, once fall rolls around and I'm getting moms, it's kind of a death sentence for them. I do not have much of a green thumb. <laughs> yes. So I guess we can go ahead and start to check out a little bit more of the park and we will follow Abby's lead. Yay. So I have to ask um, with this being uh, Dr. Whiteside's former residence, what uh, is happening with his home, his former home? Yeah, so that is actually what we're calling our welcome center. So if you go in there, we do have um, exhibits about Wesley um, and what he accomplished here. There's a gift shop inside as well as a cozy little library. Um, and then we also, of course, have a restroom. And then the other amenities we do offer is we have two little small conference rooms. So if anybody was wanting to have a meeting or a small gathering, um, they could also rent those out and all that information is available on our website. It's nice that the uh, building is getting a second life since the grounds are as well. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Well, let's go find those tubs. <laughs> I will let you take the lead um, because <laughs> I have never heard of doing anything like this for getting plants started. Yeah, it's definitely um, a unique site feature to say the least. Um, so we've estimated somewhere between I believe it's somewhere between 30 and 40 bathtubs on the property. So here's a nice little glimpse of them here. Mm -hmm. um, and the idea behind this that Wesley had was if he can control the soil, he can help those plants grow. Um, so, cause a lot of these plants, they like our climate, but maybe the soil's the issue. So this is a great way to control it um, to help them thrive. 
So we definitely encourage our visitors to come out here and count how many bathtubs you can find on the property. <laughs> and you were kind of guessing, I'm sorry, dozens maybe? Yeah, so somewhere between 30 and 40 we have uh, for sure counted. And I know you were talking about how much plant diversity is out here. So doing something unique like this uh, definitely helps increase that variety of what you'll see out here at the Whiteside Garden. Yes, absolutely. Um, so I think we estimate about 100 different families of plants. Um, so with that, the species is up in the hundreds of that we have here to offer. And all kinds of uh, colors and different textures and things like that. And then you were also telling me that Dr. Whiteside is most known kind of for his lilies, his day lilies? Yeah, so on the property, you're going to see a lot of day lilies, hostas, and magnolias. Those were kind of his favorites. And uh, But his day lilies in particular, he bred them. Um, to be late blooming. So a lot of our lilies are going to bloom from that June to August period um, and his will actually bloom into October. Well let's go give those a quick peek because they sound like they're going to be gorgeous. Yes. Well it looks like our lilies are leaning toward the little bit of sun that we've got today. <laughs> so can you talk a little bit about uh, the lilies for Dr. Whiteside? Yeah, so this is going to be um, one of our larger daylily beds here. Um, and as you can see, the ones that are in bloom are um, going to be those late blooming ones uh, right now. But whenever you're in here in the summer, this bed is full. Um, right now, we're since we're towards the end of the season, it's looking on the little sadder side. Um, but it is definitely a beautiful sight to see in the spring and summer. And again, that's why it's so important, like you said, coming back every week or every couple of weeks just to see what's new and what's in bloom, you're always going to find something different at the Whiteside Garden. Absolutely. Um, unfortunately, I've only been here myself. You know, I can count on two hands how many times I've been here. Um, and every time I come here, I'm seeing something new I've never seen before. I'm learning something new. Um, so I can't imagine our horticulturist, uh, Barb Schrock, how she feels, you know, being here every day and you turn a corner and you're like, What's that? <laughs> Do you have a favorite plant that you've maybe spotted out here? Oh goodness. I know there's a lot to choose from. I don't think I could pick a favorite to be honest because I still don't know because maybe my next favorite is going to be next <laughs> season next I'm out season here. It'll, it's not bloomed <laughs> <see> yet. <laughs> gotcha. Well thank you so much for showing us around the Whiteside Garden. We sure appreciate it. You're welcome. And we hope that you will join us next time for our next episode of Take a Hike. Take a Hike on WEIU is supported by Roll King, America's farm and home store, camping supplies, kayaks, fishing and pet supplies, and more. Find your store and more information regarding Roll King at RollKing.com.